Have you ever heard about using real earth to weather your models? Maybe you did, but maybe, just maybe you haven't heard about the technique you'll see in this video. And speaking of that, this video will be about two different topics. First about the real earth thing, and the second part will be about finishing touches and effects such as exhaust stains, spilled grease and other tasty stuff. In other words, today I'm gonna finish this model, so let's get to work. What's up mates, it's Uncle Night Shift again. This is gonna be the last video in this KV220-2 series, but I'm also gonna use this opportunity to show you something I've been using a lot in the past. But then for some unexplicable reason I stopped, and now I was just like, hey, let's try it again. So yeah, the first part of this video will be about using mostly natural materials to simulate loose dirt and debris strewn around the tank, which is a pretty common thing on operational vehicles. The process starts with a bunch of these things. Two different kinds of static grass, a sea ball, and some dirt from my backyard. They were all mixed together in a small quantity of screen until I got this mixture full of different materials and textures. The first obvious step is to place the debris on the model. I like to work in small segments, so let's focus on this fender section. You should always look up some reference photos to have a good understanding of how debris collects on tanks. The model should have some tight corners and deep crevices where dirt would accumulate and wouldn't fall off. As an example, KV tanks are great for this, but let's say a panther doesn't have that many crevices, if any at all. Then you can move it around until you're happy with the result. Another important thing worth keeping in mind is that a moving tank creates a lot of vibrations, and what this means for us is that dirt will be pushed into corners, leaving the flat surfaces almost completely clean. Now I'm gonna take this magical potion, which was originally designed for dioramas, but it works perfectly for models as well, and carefully let it flow around the gravel. You must be careful because it's some kind of lacquer based glue, so apply it only in small quantities and don't touch your model with the paintbrush too much. It partially melts the underlying paint for a short while, but don't worry, this is normal and it will make the loose dirt and grass stick to the model, so it's actually quite important. If you don't own this product, then make sure to change this situation at your earliest convenience. Believe me, you'll thank me later. It takes a few minutes for the gravel glue to dry and evaporate, but when it does, it should leave no residue whatsoever and all your loose debris is now technically a part of the model. You can dissolve the glue with enamel thinner for some reason, so be careful while painting the dirt, but we'll get to that momentarily. There's also a chance the glue will leave a few glossy tide marks, but these can be eliminated with a quick spray of flat varnish. Before I proceeded any further I needed to add some mud texture to the lower parts of the hull, because those were in direct line of fire from the tracks, which I painted in the previous video and if you haven't seen that one, you should check it out because it's a pretty solid piece of online entertainment. And if you're lucky enough and already seen it, then you know I'm using Wilder's textured earth and tap water for this delicate mud buildup. Now that we have all the different textures out of the way, it's time to add some more subtle effects. The first paint will be Aqualine Dry Earth, from Wilder, again. This is an acrylic paste, so it can be diluted with water, but the cool thing is that once it dries, it can be reactivated at any moment. Thanks to that, there's no point of no return when you're not able to blend or remove it anymore, and as such you can slap it all over the surface. You can for example apply it over your entire model and once you're done, just clean your brush and start blending, which is very easy and one thing I like about acrylics is that, unlike oil paints, when you blend them they create this beautiful muddled effect. This is something I already mentioned in my winter whitewash video where I was working with the washable white camo from ammo. <laughs> camo from ammo. Because we are using tap water, the debris will stay in place, as the gravel glue only reacts with lacquer and enamel thinner. By the way, before those aqualine paints were a thing, I was using my custom Tamiya acrylic dust mixture. If you're interested, I made a video about that as well. Now, because this is a winter tank and there's usually not much dust in winter, and my reference pictures are a proof of that, 
I kept the dry earth effects very subtle on the rest of the tank. Just a very light irregular layer is more than enough. So light you won't notice it, but it will blend those clean areas with fenders and the extremely muddy lower hull. Ok, now it's time to add some darker earth tones. I will use the same paint like I used on the tracks, because we have to make the mud effects consistent all over the tank. And this is another pasty product, but unlike Aqualine, it's enamel. And as such, I had to be much more careful with the application, because like we learned earlier, enamel will dissolve the gravel glue. This is partially unavoidable in some specific situations, but even if you accidentally dislodge a strand of grass or a small chunk of earth, just place it back with a pair of tweezers, gently push it against the surface and wait for the enamel thinner to evaporate. As you can see I'm trying to avoid blending the paint too much to avoid this problem. Since this step is basically an earth colored wash, there's not much blending involved anyway. Ok, so this concludes the first part of this video and now we can focus on all of those small final effects which will finish our model. First effect, spilled oil and grease. There are dedicated products for these effects, but I decided to mix it myself using these paints. The result should be a dark brown glossy mixture. Just like in any other case, having a few reference pictures can be a huge help, because sometimes you can find grease and oil in places you'd never expect them to be. But if such real life pictures are currently not in your personal possession, then just apply the paint around the engine bay area, just like I did right here, or around filling caps like the one over here. Also note how you can add contrast between individual components in a pretty natural looking way. I think this effect should be always applied very sparingly, because the result can quickly become too overwhelming when compared to the rest of the tank. Let's now add some spilled fuel. I made another enamel mixture from these paints and my intention was the satin, not overly glossy dark orange effect. Now spilled fuel usually evaporates in a matter of seconds and as such only leaves a dust colored stain if the surface is dirty, but reference pictures often show pretty heavy dark colored stains around fuel tank filler caps. Not to mention different types of earth create different effects. The type of fuel also plays a huge role in this. I've seen a few photos where diesel fuel left a dark orange, almost rust-like stains and I like the effect so much I keep recreating it on any tank with a diesel engine. It usually creates confusion and discussion amongst people, so it's actually pretty fun. Ok, let's now address the exhaust and this is gonna be a real treat, because Soviet AFE engines, and it doesn't matter if they're old or new, make a lot of mess. The first layer will be made from a black pigment. If this model was any bigger, I'd probably airbrush the soot residue with an airbrush, but dry pigments are in this case easier to control and, most importantly, can be partially removed if you go too far. Luckily, like I said, Soviet tank engines are so incredibly messy it's actually harder to make the effect not strong enough rather than the opposite. And don't forget to add some of it inside the exhaust pipes as well. Now I mixed a glossy black mixture and this will simulate the engine oil which is always leaking from these types of engines. You can actually google search any type of Soviet or Russian tank and you'll see exactly what I mean. The reason why this happens is unclear to me. Um, one explanation which I heard from other modelers is that Soviets used low quality diesel fuel with lots of impurities and oil and as a result these were just ejected from the engine because they couldn't burn. But when I was having a beer with the guy actually involved in the military industry, namely T-72 tanks and BMP-1 infantry vehicles, he told me it's because the engine seals have just a tiny bit of tolerance to ensure every part is moving smoothly, and as such they always leak a small amount of oil. And he was also quite upset about the first theory, so I decided not to test his patience any further. So in the end, I'm not sure what's the actual reason for that, but if you know or have your own theories, then leave them in the comments. Anyway, I used the dry black pigment on the main gun barrel as well. And here it's best to add just a small amount around the tip, because barrels were usually pretty clean. One of the finishing touches is to polish all of the worn edges. 
This is easily done with a soft pencil, although I have a graphite stick from an art store, but it's basically the same thing. Of course it's best to focus this effect around heavily chipped parts. When you think about it, chipping is a pretty interesting concept, because it involves several techniques separated by other techniques, aka you have the light colored superficial chips, then you have the dark steel chips, then rust effects, then all the weathering layers like dust, mud, grime and fuel, and then you finish it off with graphite. Not to mention if you're into hairspray chipping, then it spreads across the entire painting process. And that makes our model ready for the very last detail. Or no, there's actually one more thing. And I almost forgot about it again. The machine gun barrels, which I painted before with dark gray acrylic paint, should be also polished with graphite. But in this case, I opted for graphite powder, which I simply made by grinding the graphite stick against sandpaper. And my favorite tool for application is a sculpting brush, which is a paintbrush with a silicone tip. And I just realized there are a few more things that I wanted to address before adding the very last detail. So first I decided to blend some of the enamel mud over the tarp, because it was still pretty clean compared to the rest of the tank, and it was especially sticking out like a sore thumb compared to those dirty fenders. And I also speckled some of that dark wash which I've been using in this video. This creates faint dark stains, which are a pretty normal thing on filthy pieces of cloth. The loose dirt was also unusually light when compared to the tracks or some of the stronger effects on the upper hull, so I also treated it with a small amount of the dark wash. I also applied it over those spilled fuel stains, because they just looked... I don't know, very bright, I guess, you know, and I wanted to make them darker. And now we can finally add the final detail. The antenna. I made it from a piece of stretch sprue because all of my copper wires were overly thick for this scale. I painted it with the same Russian green color I used to paint the tank. And that makes this model officially finished. Let's now make a short recap. It all started when I got this model a few years ago from a friend. But then I did a few improvements and fixed some mistakes. Then I painted it with the distressing technique in Russian 4PO color. Then I added the whitewash with a combination of the hairspray technique and washable white acrylic paint. And of course some filters, washes, ambient occlusion, light chipping, dark chipping, rust tones. Then I painted all the details, including the tarp. Then I tried to fix the tracks with heavier layers of mud, although I'm still not sure if I did a good enough job with this. And then it was about adding the organic dirt, painting it with both light and dark earth tones, and then all of the final effects like grime, fuel, exhaust stains, polished metal and some finishing touches and micro corrections. If you want to watch all 7 parts of this series, there will be a card at the very end of this video. So I hope you like the finished model and if you do, please let me know by giving this video a like and leaving a comment. The next video will be probably some kind of tutorial, I guess? I don't know what exactly at the moment, but... Um, definitely something you've been asking for a long time, because if you ask, I provide. Yeah, so if you're watching this video then I'm already working on the next model, but as I'm recording this I have just no idea what will it be. So if you want to know what's happening behind the scenes in real time and get some interesting extra content along the way, then consider checking out my Patreon page and joining these guys. So yeah, the next video will be some sort of tutorial and then... I don't know, maybe I'll make a couple more videos about something before we start the next model series, and that's pretty much it. So thanks again for watching, don't forget to subscribe if you're new here, and I hope you'll have a great weekend, and I'll see you mates in the next one, and here are some bloopers. The process starts with a... The process starts with a... With a... <laughs> it takes a few minutes for the gravel groove... It takes a few minutes for the gravel... It takes a few minutes for the gravel. It takes a few minutes for the gravel.
It takes a few minutes for the gravel glue to dry and evaporate, but when it does... <laughs> but reference pictures often show pretty heavy dark colored stains around fuel tank fuel cra craps. 